How you doing, everybody? I'm Chris Freeman Bennett with the Vancouver Film School. This is our Storyteller Studio podcast. Uh, today, I have a really fascinating guest, Sarah Edmondson. Um, Sarah's story is truly one of the best fits we could ask for on one of these episodes. Each, each week, we try to talk about storytelling and how it fits into a whole host of different industries and crafts, arts and sciences, all those things. And Sarah, uh, as an actor, your, your last few years have been some of the most tumultuous and uh, certainly newsworthy, headline-grabbing um, years of your entire life. Um, your new book, Scarred, The True Story of How I Escaped Nexium, The Cult That Bound My Life, uh, it just hit newsstands in September, and wow, you did this, Sarah. This is an incredible story, truly. How are you? Thank you for asking that first. <laughs> That's a great question uh, because it changes, and um, it's you know been a, like you said a crazy couple of years. I'm okay. To, in fact, today I'm a great. I slept well last night. I did normal things. I got some exercise in. I played with my children. These things make me happy. Um, some this days, is good. this is good. Yes. So let let's set up a couple of things here. There's mm -hmm. a lot to talk about today. Yes. One, um, you were in a cult, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. Two, you you are a, a very talented actor, and I want to talk about that, how that's going. But the most important thing right now, you're a new mom again. Mm -hmm. Little baby boy, seven months old, right? Correct. Congratulations. Thank you. And all of this, you decide, hey, let's have another baby. Yes. And, that and write a book. <laughs> there you go. Like, why not, right? Sure. Like, you didn't have anything else going on. Why not? Right. Um, how is the little baby? He's amazing. Yeah? And I, I have read that kissing your baby actually increases serotonin levels in your body. And so that's what I just do. I just kiss him all day long and cuddle him and, and play with him. For sure. Yeah. For sure it does. Yeah. So this extraordinary new mom... Uh, again, you, you've got a, you've got another wonderful son. Um, this working mom, this actor. Um, in the middle of all this, let's talk about the cult. Let's talk about Nexium. Most people watching will have read a little bit or a lot about this. I think a lot of people are fascinated by it. Um, you and I have known each other for a couple of years, and we've talked about this a lot. And what to me in the story always struck me as as so fascinating and important. Um, beyond the fact that you've been so brave and courageous to really get in front of it and be a voice and help people understand and, and help others get out of, of a cult or, or, or something like this, um, it's how you got into it to me that was so fascinating. And when you told me all these stories over time, I remember thinking, this could happen to anybody. I mean, this, this could have happened to me. Um, when you look back at it now, are you still convinced that um, would you, are you smart enough now in hindsight that you would have seen it or was this something unlike anything you ever would have guessed you could have somehow been pulled into and be become a part of? Oh, this, yeah, another great question. I think now with the education I have, I, I don't think I'd fall for it again because I now know what these things look like and I know what the red flags are and I know what the template is, which is one of the reasons I wrote the book is to yeah. give that template to other people. I wasn't educated in cults. I wasn't educated. Who is? No, I, I, I don't. Well, maybe a little bit more so now. I mean, it's it's, beca it's become a sure. I don't want to say trendy, but it's it's it, it's dominating a lot of different you know fields in terms of there there's a net, the Netflix series about all sorts of different yep. cult-related, mm -hmm. um, you know, scripted series and documentary series and, of course, Leah Remini's uh, series, uh, Scientology in the Aftermath. It's become very popular. So people are more aware, I think, of cults than uh, certainly I was when I joined. It was now 15 years ago, and I was there for 12 years. I was yeah. joined in, the, in 2005. My image of cults was, like, long robes and drinking right. goat's blood and shaving your head and, like, you know, weird, weird stuff that, like, you know, n n this this, this group was not that didn't look like no, that. not no, at all, not at all. And that that was a fascinating thing. And as an actor, um, you there were a lot of actors who were a part of Nexium. Walk True. walk me through and help me understand that because the um, there's a reason that that happens, and I'm 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 interested. And I want to share that with our our listeners. Originally, when you became involved, 
what did you think you were going to become a part of? Okay, I, I just have like three tangents to go on after I remember these things. So one is how I got involved, and two, talking about actors and why they loved it so much. So yeah. let's make sure I come back to that. I will. Um, but I got involved because I met a filmmaker who I really respected, and it's great being in this you know, venue and also talking to you, so I think you'll understand. I, I saw a film called What the Bleep Do We Know? Mm -hmm. And this was a film that came out in the early 2000s. It was one of the highest... Um, grossing documentary film, independent documentary films of all time, and it was about spirituality, quantum physics, and how basically your thoughts affect your reality. Right. It was, I think, probably the beginning of my journey of uh, spirituality, and, and um, I was at a time in my life where I was an actor, I you know, still am an actor, but I was not feeling fulfilled with that. Like, I had more purpose in me other than, you know, beer commercials and vampire TV shows. And, and don't get me wrong, I was very grateful for the career that I had at the time, but it wasn't where I thought I would be right. by my mid to now late 20s when I met Mark, this filmmaker. And I met him at a film festival, and I loved his film, and I basically, you know, was very... Um, moved by the film. Moved by the film, and he said, well, if you like my film, you may like this program I just took. And, and to me, it was like a seminar or workshop. Right. Which, which is not uncommon. Not There's, uncommon. You can look on, on, on YouTube or, or Facebook anytime this week, and they're all over the country, everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Yep. And also, my mom is a therapist. My dad's a counselor. I've been in this world of self-development. I'd taken other workshops through them before. I've always been interested in, in bettering myself. I'd read books in, in that field as well. And so this was a natural next step, and I also wanted to work with him. And this was like kind of, of the promise, you know. This it's was networking. It's networking. career building. Yeah, sure. it was like let's, of course. you know, let's let's change the world. The idea for me was shifting the world through conscious shifting media, having an effect on the world through media, which is you know not just entertainment, which is great, mm -hmm. but how do you shift consciousness, which is what the film did, uh, what the bleep. But the bleep did that, That's I believe. Right. So I was like, I want to be a part of that. I yeah. don't want to just entertain. I also want to help people through media. So helping people has always been a big drive for me. I was a camp counselor. Nothing unusual know. about that. Yes. And when I was choosing my career back in Montreal, I was either theater, theater school, or being a, a counselor, a therapist like my parents. It was psychology or theater. So it's a natural draw. It was a very natural fit for me. And they were always positioning these uh, mm -hmm. events or workshops mm -hmm. like a... Like a learning event, right? Mm -hmm. It was designed to come and meet other, was it pre presented as network and, and meet successful artists or actors or people? Or was it, um, you know, take that, was it curriculum or some it kind of? Curriculum. It the was curriculum. The actors and artists part of it came later because of Mark and I and the people we knew. Right. And, and that's the nature of a. Actors yeah, no actors. The actors no, yeah, I brought, sure. brought in people similar to me and then it kind of exploded which I'll get to later, yeah, remind right. me of, about that. But no, it was pitched as personal and professional development and looking at your belief system and, and your wiring. I mean, I, I, I'm so glad we met after I left because I would have met you and thought you were great and totally would have tried to recruit you because <laughs> you would have flattered, been, thank you. Well, you would have been perfect because you're, you're hardworking, you're a go-getter, you're, um, you're connected you you have a big vision for yourself. Like this would be the perfect. I probably person. would have wanted to go. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm a member of the American Marketing Association mm -hmm. or the you know the CPRA. Like it, you're totally right. I think mm -hmm. there are lots of those things where uh, you know people like me or in the industry like you and I are, are, I guess susceptible is the word. It would not have probably raised a flag, and it certainly didn't. And, and you know, as you tell the story, and I, I'm really familiar with it. You had no red flags early on. Not at that point. No. no. For me, this was it, it was an opportunity to connect with like-minded people. The way that Mark pitched it, it was also a group of humanitarians that were really shifting the world one person at a time. And we're basically doing the things that I wanted to be a part of. And all of those things were dangled like a carrot in front of me, just like they got Mark. Mark told me later that they told him that Keith, who, the uh, creator of Nexium was the scientist, and he'd be meeting like-minded scientists. So it was sort of like mm -hmm. they would bring people in on the values that were important to them. Sure. So, you know, if I had met you at the time, and I wouldn't have, I mean, I'm trying to think of how I met you and, the, and what I knew about you, but I probably would have shared, you know, the like-minded artists and these, right. these filmmakers, and we're all supporting each other, and we're to go, I mean, all these things were true. Wouldn't have been a lie, but I would have showed it to you in a way that I think would have appealed to you. Did you, did you think mm -hmm. of yourself like a recruiter for yes. Nexium 
Was it yeah. called Nexium? It was called. I'd never. Nexium wasn't a word that was right. Co- it, that comes was, later. The, yeah. Well, it's an umbra- actually was originally the umbrella company, mm-hmm. but the program that I got involved with was um, under that umbrella called Executive Success Program. That's right. right. That's right. So ESP, we called it, and I was I was brought in through ESP, which is an educational tool set, a curriculum that's designed to rewire your belief system, which if you believe that the people who are doing that wiring have good intentions, Mm -hmm. that could be a good thing to get rid of your limiting beliefs, you know, um, critical self-doubts and anything that's, and this is like which, by the way, the is world. yeah. I yeah. mean, it, you're you're describing a half of you know Tony Robbins' exactly. last special. I mean, it's it's yes. a very uh, accepted and um, certainly uh, tested model of sure. you know self development, professional development, all of that. Yeah, and and therapy. Yeah, it's it basically like therapy, goal setting, and NLP. It's a lot of Tony Robbins. In fact, when I watched I'm Not Your Guru, yeah, which I just watched recently, isn't it incredible? It's totally incredible. The, did you find? I remember watching it and thinking of you the entire time. Really? Going, what were you thinking? All, all of these. I didn't know if there was a real big difference to the people attending that event and Honestly, probably who were attending the, the ESP program in the early days. Well, there must have been a lot of parallels. A lot of parallels. And in fact, I, I, I'd never taken Tony Robbins when I was in ESP, but people said, oh, it's similar to Tony Robbins. And so I'd learned to kind of like poo-poo it. But really what Tony Robbins is doing was a well-produced version of what we were doing. You sure. know, in terms of lights and and music right. and nice binders and like, wow, right, 2,500 people. We had 25 people. So we had a small group, chairs, you know, a little continental intimate, breakfast, more much more intimate. And of course, at the time, I thought that was way better. I mean, I, who knows? I, I do think But for that, 12 years, you're yeah. doing this. So certainly... For, for many years, mm-hmm. you're getting value from oh, this. Absolutely. There's something happening. You're, I mean, you've yeah. made some great contacts. You talk about this. You t- I mean, some incredible people, both from in the industry and outside it. Yeah. Um, when does it start to feel like this is not professional development? I'm not becoming a better actor. This is something different. Oh, that's there's a huge journey from the, when I got into when I left and when it when it changed. But I but I will tell you day one of my first training, there were red flags. And I, all of those things were preempted by the head trainer who said, you're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going, you're, you're going to have what's called the urge to bolt, to leave. And if you do, come speak to a coach, because if you never talk about what's coming up for you, then you'll, you'll leave the room with those issues. And you all came, we all came here to work on your issues, right? The most yeah. successful people right. know your limitations. It's called a double bind. You don't want to be not successful. It's genius, if not terrifying. It's totally terrifying. So I'm like, I want to be successful. I want to work on my issues. I'm having that feeling. I want to leave. In fact, recently I ran it after writing the book, I ran into one of the coaches that trained my first five day. And she said, I cannot believe how far you went because you hated it at first. And I forgot. I knew that I was skeptical, but I forgot that I actually hated it. I was like, this is fucking bullshit. Can sure. I swear on this? Of course you okay. can. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, this is bullshit. Yeah, like be the, you. The, 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 Nancy, the trainer, was super cheesy. Everything was kind of 80, like late 80s, early 90s, you know? Really? And I was just like, what am I paying for? But then I'm like, I paid. I'm not going to get my money back, you know? And also, Mark Vicente, this filmmaker that I really trusted, was like, I know it's weird. First few days are super strange. Stick it out day three. That's when things change. So I was like, well, I'll pay it. I'll stick it out to day three. And that's the nature of how the indoctrination or brainwashing is a more common yeah, right, term. Right. How it works is they, they have a number of techniques, which I now know that they did to us. It's called forced attention. So they're forcing me to not take notes and stay straight ahead, getting bored, repeating certain things. And there's an indoctrination that takes place over time. And then at a certain day three is when things either shift for people or they don't. And some people never come back. I and mean, that's fine. But I was hooked. Is, is there... In, so in this experience that they've created and they're welcoming you and they're attracting people mm-hmm. like you and, and trying, to, trying to get you to be an ambassador for them and mm-hmm. keep that going, are they presenting they know what the best Sarah looks like or is it designed like a lot of uh, you know professional development workshops where you have a vision of the best you and they will give you the tools? Did, did they feel, did you ever feel like if you surrender to it, um, the best you will come out of this, or did you have to still guide? That's a great question. Whatever, whatever the 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 ultimate outcome that you were searching for was. Does the, that make sense? Yes, it's a really good question. No one's asked me that before, and it's interesting because it's actually both. So they would have us write sheets about like our ideal selves, like our dream life, infinity goal. They called it. You know, what yeah, does yeah. that look like? In the yeah. you know, the best optimal version of yourself. Write it, write it, write it. So that was important, and that was always driving me, and I had these goals. But there was also this 
tacit enforcement that for you to succeed within the company, and I say that loosely, of course, we didn't call it a cult, but it was called a company. Of course. There was a series of things you needed to do and achieve to be recognized and to go up to the next level. It was a martial arts system of growth. Right. So it was Got like it. this is this is your vi- we're doing this for you. This is you use the tools to serve you in your life. And you hit milestones you hit or milestones. Whatever. Right. But it was also you can't do those things unless you've hit these ones. So it was for the company and also for yourself. But ultimately, if personal development, a.k.a. Nexium, wasn't your highest value at a certain point, you couldn't grow within the company. So it started off that creativity and acting was my highest value. Sure. Storytelling, why we're here. Of course. That's why I was an actor. And now slowly those things switched. And no one told me to switch them. But I, but I, but I replaced it. Just, it. it just, it's like, oh, personal development is more important, actually. And I, and I, I can see that. And I say this all the time <laughs> to anyone who, when it, if it comes up in conversation, um, you know, how, how did they not know? And I go, right. you know what? I, I know, Sarah, and this mm-hmm. story is incredible. And you wouldn't know. I no. mean, the way what you're describing still up to this point is not far off from from a course you'd pay money to go. Some yeah. companies will even, uh, you know, expense those workshops for their employees. Yes. Let alone if you go out and do it on your own professional development. Absolutely. Um, there are there are one on one coaches who offer that service for a very very high premium. Yeah, way more than ours. Cost. Sure. Yeah. Um, so it's still not it's still not you know raising the red flag. And then somewhere along the way, you said you switch over. Um, Can I address one thing real quick? Yeah. That is actually something that comes up the most in interviews is people saying, but really, how did you not know? And I think that is a great question. In fact, if I wasn't in the situation, I hadn't gone through this whole experience, I'd probably think the same thing. Truly. I'd probably just be like, really? You're just – is this self-preservation? Because uh, we all think we're smarter than that. Yes. And sure. I, and, and also, you know, and another reason why I wrote the book is I want to explain that cults and groups like this, they, they don't, they're, there's, it's not full disclosure. It's not, transpa- it's not transparent what's happening behind the closed doors. In fact, the personal development and all the good things, and yes, you're right, there's a lot of good things that I, that I learned through my whole 12 years there, that's on the outside. And that's how these groups work. There has to be something good to lure you in. And what's on the inside is only privileged information for just a small few. And you have to go through a number of steps to, to even know what those things are and a lot of indoctrination to even get to that point. Yeah. Do you find somewhere in that 12, 12 month journey, obviously now what you're chasing or pursuing has changed? Does it become a goal that you're, is it a, a, a mindset you want to achieve or is it goal based and or is it also now it's become part of your social circle too? You've got a lot of friends and mm-hmm. colleagues and people you're invested in. Like oh, like when I was still in. Yeah. Yes. What's what's keeping you now over that time? Yeah. Where it, you know all of those things. Yeah. When I was in, and and there were red flags along the way that I marked in the book so people could know what they look like in terms of being gaslighted a lot and it, things always being flipped back to me that were like if at any time I had a concern if I went to Mark or one of the higher ranks because you couldn't go down in rank. Like, you don't tell one of your students here if you have a problem with how the something's happening, right? Like, right, you've got right. to talk to somebody on staff. You would never complain to the... Right. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> so you have to go up. And so every time I went up, I w- it would get flipped back uh, as my limitation, <sighs> right? So if I'm saying it's, you know, it's really unfortunate that we're not being paid as, like, monthly as, as we're supposed to be as a salesperson, for example. Right. Oh, you seem entitled. That's your limitation. Have you talked to your coach about that? Wow. And always done in a way that it wasn't actually, like I'm even being harsher than it, than it would normally be like, wow, you seem like you're really having a reaction, Chris. Have you talked to your coach about your reaction? You may want to work on that because you seem like there's something going on for you and you need to work on that before you bring it to anybody else. And right? You know, Do you feel how yeah. like, ugh, that is? Uh, yeah. And at the same time, you go, there is some, you know, w- one of my producers the other day, Dylan and I were looking at something and he, he, you know, he responded to, you know what, I'm always open to the feedback. Mm-hmm. And I think we, and, and he had a really great reaction as we were looking at something. And I think we train ourselves to go, okay, yeah, I should take that feedback. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's maybe human nature to want to, um, receive that criticism and not know that it's something it's masked as something else well, obviously what you didn't yeah. you didn't sense that yet well i felt uncomfortable with it but again any discomfort no pain no gain is is a, in way to an in, inroads to my growth right so anytime i had one of these interactions it it wasn't strong enough to pull me out because 
of all the things you mentioned, this was, it eventually became my community. You know, we I, we had social events. We called humanitarian humanities events. Yeah. Um, my family was involved. What kept me, I think, fully going in in terms of getting into inner 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 circle, where yes, they did know, they knew of what course. was going on, yeah. was that I never moved to Albany. And I never... The ultimate commitment. Yeah, the ultimate commitment. And trust me, they were pushing hard for yeah, me to Yeah, and I've Albany. read about... I think a lot of people have read about Albany and what was going on there. Yes. Um, and I, I did... I, when So people, back to the other question, how did you not know? I didn't live in Albany. I didn't see the day-to-day. -day. I'd go in, take trainings, and I got the fuck out of there. I, sure. I, intuitively, I was being... I protected myself because I never liked Albany. But I'll tell, I will tell you that at the time, so this would be 2009, four years in, this is before I totally made the switch to ESP being my highest yes. value. Yep. I was working a lot. I did a film festival that got into TIFF, um, where ironically I played a sociopath. Right. And I learned how right. to play a sociopath from the, from the teachings. What was that film? It's called A Gun to the Head by Blaine Thurier. A Gun to the Head. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link to that one after in the description. Oh, yeah. I have this. no idea where that is. I mean, it's a very... It's a crazy independent film, but probably one of the things I'm most proud of as an actor. It's incredible that yeah. you, um, the parallels to that experience too, were you aware yes. of it at the time? Oh God, no. I mean, wow. no, I, there, there's. Did anybody yeah. else that knows you, anyone mm -hmm. else that really knows you and loves you, you know, your, your, your husband aside, um, were, were other people sensing anything or saying anything? Uh, you know, nobody ever did an intervention with me, which is something that I, that I've, ask people like because people since the news have come out have been like well i knew i knew and i'm like oh really you you knew and do you believe that no because if you really actually if anyone knew it was that what we know now right they're fucking assholes for not getting me out <laughs> for sure you know so i think yeah. what people are really mean and i forgive them is that they n sensed that things were weird and culty don't be culty right but they, nobody could ever really pinpoint what was going on. And if they could, it was if they ever came to me, and some people would say things like, oh, Sarah, you know, our cult. Like my, my agent would joke about going to Albany, you know, don't, go, don't shave your head this time. But it was a joke in a, in, a, in, a, in a sense. But I think it maybe not a joke. You know, it's like when people kind of, like I have some friends in some other groups. <laughs> sure. And like I don't know Mary them. Kay or yeah. <laughs> Amway or whatever. I mean there's yeah. lots of I, I know lots of people involved in something that they're they're fanatical about. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I know what you mean and I don't know if it always warrants a hey, you're really into this kind of a conversation. Yeah. You never you never know. But I have to ask you about sure. um, and it's in the headlines everywhere, the the sex stuff. Right. Um, how did we not see that? Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, from from understanding the story, that doesn't reveal itself on day one, of course. Oh no, no, we don't even talk about sex in the five day. That's right. That it, it comes way later. But how much of that is out there is 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 really accurate versus what was that experience like for you? Well, do you mind for, if I ask? Oh that? no, of course. Yeah. No, of course. And I think it's a good question because one of the another reason why I wrote the book is because I want to tell the story, storytelling properly from my perspective. We weren't in. A sex cult, right? We were course, in a personal yeah. and professional development program, but the fact is, it was a sex cult, just not in Vancouver. So it was in Albany. And when I, when people say sex cult, like what is that? There were people having sex. Is that a problem? No, right? Is it a problem that he has a polyamorous lifestyle, which is what we found out at the end that he right. has in the, in his case a harem? Yeah, Keith Raniere L has liter literally. literally had a harem. I don't even know when I when I start to count and start to do the math and read the transcripts in the trial, it was at least somewhere between 40 and 100 people that I knew of at, that had sex with him. So wow. what makes something a sex cult? I think actually all cults are sex cults in some way. There's some weird sex thing or power thing or money thing right. linked with sex I think behind you're right. closed doors, right? That's like, why are these men um, bringing in all these women to serve yeah, them? What's the, what's the motivation behind this ab gross abuse of power exactly. and influence? Which sure. is the number it's one. It's money or sex. Yeah, it's money or sex. And yeah. that's really what I what I motivated me is to expose this abuse of power mm -hmm. and shine a light on other abuses of power because it's not just cults. You know, any, I'm sure, and I, <laughs> yeah. funny, after writing this book, I was even saying to my editor and like the PR person, because I was so in it, I was like, is this even interesting? Like, is this an interesting story? Because I'm, I don't even oh, know. Believe me, it is. <laughs> it is. And, and not in a, in a, in a, oh, you know, you can't look away when you see a car crash. Yeah. It's a, there's a curiosity to it that I really, you got to believe me, when people hear the story, and I, anyone I talk to about it over the last few years, it is a cautionary tale, which I think you've been such a great yes. voice for 
and it's important you do because I really do think, you know, and I'm not beating on on the on the Tony Robbins stuff. I'm really not, but I think there that line between fanaticism and cult uh, yeah. is very thin. Yeah, it's well, very very thin. I would it, put him in the same category. Why, why not... is walking on hot coals yeah. any different than uh, branding? Mm -hmm. uh, a part of your body to, to, to show your, your, your support and your buy-in. Right. Um, and you know, when you watch, mm -hmm. I'm not your guru on mm -hmm. Netflix, this is what they're doing. Hundreds and, and hundreds. But you know that he yeah. also produced it? I did. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, Tony I, Robbins did. Yes. So yes. I, I wondered also, and I happen to know somebody who knows somebody who said that, of course they, he's going to edit it to make it look great as it as it did it was it was a little edgy at points yeah you know there was the couple it, um interventions they call it mm -hmm. where he works with people one-on-one -on -one that were pretty that were extreme you know um yeah had somebody when you call, call up yeah, their boyfriend call, and, and break, break up, up with, with them. them in front of 2,500 people i'm like ooh, I, I mean i'm glad he pushed her to i mean i'm glad that she did it because it was clearly not a good relationship but that's not a way to i mean i just didn't feel good about that no and and, and, and you talk about this also in the book where they come to a point where you know, again, I want a disclaimer here. I'm not, yeah. I'm not knocking anyone who's gone to a, a Tony Robbins event, but that line is thin. It is thin. And that perfect example. And then you look what was happening within Nexium, and now somewhere along the journey, you have graduated to a certain level, mm -hmm. and now they want you to do something compromising. They want right. a photo. They want a video. They want, they want the ultimate proof right. of your commitment. And that's actually the, what, what I was just about to say about people saying, like, is it relatable? Is this interesting? And s people say, even though they weren't necessarily branded or or done, done anything quite as extreme, everyone's been in a position where their boss is asking them to do somebody or something, somebody higher in position is asking them to do something they don't want to do. Yep. And they're like, oh, I don't feel good about that. How do I, how do I stay in this company or s continue on in my career? And do this thing, right? So that that's that's like something that people can relate to, right? It's not yeah. they're not in a cult, but they're like, you know, am I compromising my own ethics if I do X, Y, Z? Right? I interrupted you. What were you saying? No, no, no. Say? You just yeah. answered it. That was that was exactly mm -hmm. what I was mm -hmm. wondering, and, and I think you you just nailed it. Did did you find though? What was that moment for you? That that um, that revelatory that revelatory. I am in a cult. thing you have to do <laughs> mm -hmm. to prove your ultimate commitment. Um, Right. What was that thing that they wanted you to do? Well, that was the branding, and I think that that is the, is the branding. And that, that was the first time. Because there were stories of videos and photos from other people or things they had to say yeah. that were likely oh, not God. even true. Well, everything leading up um, to that. Yeah. Everything leading up to that is. It's an, an, it's an emotional hostage. It's, an emotional, it's emotional blackmail and actually yeah. blackmail because that's yeah. what they've all been convicted Re of, blackmail. Yeah. Uh, sex trafficking, uh, forced labor conspiracy, conspiracy to commit all these things. Anyway, I, I the, the actual branding itself, and I know you're not asking me, is something that I've had to now doing over 50 interviews about it. I've learned that I can't talk about that night. And right. just because it re-traumatizes me and it triggers me and like it's just PTSD is a thing that I'll probably always be managing. I think you've done a good job in the book with it. <laughs> Thank and you. And I think people will get as much as they need on that. Yeah, part. I go into great detail. I'm like yeah. it's all there. They want to know how it happened and also the steps leading up to it, which was really important for me, for my own... So not just self-preservation, but just preservation of my sanity to know and, and for me to understand how did I get to that point? How did I lay down on a table and say these words and let this happen? And when I say let it happen, I was coerced. I was coerced. I was lied to. I was betrayed. All of those things. People don't get it if they say, oh, what, these women are branding each other? <sighs> you know, like there's a judgment that, again, I probably would have if I didn't know the story. And mm -hmm. I want to explain how somebody goes from being a attending a personal development workshop to ha letting that happen. And of course, if someone had said, hey, do you want to get the, this this guy's initials torched into your pelvic, pelvic area <laughs> with no anesthetic? Of do course, I would have said, no fucking way. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So it, it happened slowly over time. D so yeah. let me throw an idea to yeah. you. And, and, and you walk me back if, if, I'm, if I'm reaching too far into it. Mm -hmm. But I wonder... Are, there, there is a, there is an extraordinarily, extraordinarily high number of actors in this organization, mm -hmm. a lot, um, and there's an, uh, there's an obvious answer to that: actors, no actors, and mm -hmm. that's, that's not anything unusual. I wonder: are actors, are artists hardwired, or are they even, uh, you know, with professional training, literally, are they susceptible to direction? Mm -hmm. You know, it, you've been on set 
hundreds of times, you work with directors, all kinds of directors, mm -hmm. and there's a moment, I think sometimes, and, and you probably agree, where you, you surrender to that direction. Yeah. You have to trust in that direction. Yes. Um, even if you don't see the vision, the director has one, and in, in many ways, it's like the military. You're, you're taking orders and you're gonna follow. Yes. Is, is some of that at play there? Um, I don't mean to say that all actors will uh, acting in and itself is a mm -hmm. cult, yeah. but rather the um, the susceptibility to that, and where that sometimes you might not even realize it because you're tra you're, you're trained to take direction. Is that yes. a is that a fair assessment? I think that could be. I've never thought about that, and I, I now that you're saying it, I think that's definitely an element. I think another big chunk of it is that a lot of artists stereotypically, even if they're the most talented. Yeah. at their craft don't necessarily have their shit together in terms of a business sure. sense. Yeah. So a lot of the people I was working with was helping them get an agent and setting goals around making their first voice demo, which is one of the things I did when I first got in. And they kind of used me as the poster child within Nexium to, and by the way, we didn't use the word recruit, which is what it was, but enroll. Enroll. Enrolling was, was a, they wanted to create an enrolling culture, enrolling being uh, synonymous with building humanity. Okay, so right. the more you enroll, the more you build humanity. What don't a, you want to be? A, yeah, you, I, I don't want to be a humanitarian. That. You should build a course. role. Sign a role, me up. A role. So that's how I saw it at the time. But I was always working with people based on what I had done. And one of the things I did when I first got in is I did the goals program, where I, after seven years of keeping it on my to-do list, was able to write, produce, and distribute my voice demo reel. This is back when we had CDs before MP3s to every studio right. in Vancouver. And that was something I did because of my goals lab. And by the way, I mean, that's good work. I mean, that's important work to do when you're out there promoting yeah. yourself. I mean, I see a lot of things in there that I go, yeah, you should do things like that. Yes, yeah. That's, that's not bad. I would no. use you as a poster child for, you know, own your success in that Yeah, in that and I could probably teach a great workshop about that. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like should. Like the business of this stuff. I and, bet you could. And I, that's really what I love doing the most. And I think why it, it grew in Vancouver is people would come in and like, oh, I'm this and that, but I struggle here. I'm like, oh, I can help you with that. All you need is X, Y, Z. And sometimes it was really, really just a physical thing of all you need is an agent and other times people just had emotional stuff to work through which is another big gap I think for actors is that they're these emotional vessels and they love to tell stories and and sometimes they may have a block like I had a block with when I was going to theater school with anger I couldn't and still still sometimes you couldn't I, pull it out in a performance is that what you mean yeah yeah and, and maybe with a coach but like on the day or like in an, in auditions and what and why do you think that was is that does every actor have a block or that was just when you that identified was some, that was something i identified with and i think that most actors i think most people have blocks with something you know sure. people have issues around very common things like conflict you yep. know they don't like conflict yep. so they don't like for me i hadn't i didn't leave my agent for for way too long because i didn't want to break up with her you know what i mean sure for that it feels mm, sticky so I had, it's easier to just get along. Yeah, so that was one of the things I worked on in my first training. And then I worked on my confidence level. So a lot of people are good, at, or a lot of actors are good at, at acting, but they're not good at auditioning. Again, for me, I'd get really nervous. I would literally go into fight or flight in auditions. So that was something else I wow. worked on. Yeah, and so the point where I'd go in and I'd be grounded and calm, and I would just like, you know all the things you're supposed to do? You're supposed to play and listen and yeah. you know connect. But I couldn't do that because I was literally like out of body. So and you've you've now you, so mm -hmm. jumping ahead a little bit, mm -hmm. um, let's say you get you're 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 out in your back and you're, you've always been working throughout it, mm -hmm. and I know you were you were worried in the height of it a couple years ago what kind of an impact this would have on your career, mm -hmm. and of course you're still getting some really cool parts and I I love that you did Salvation that was what fun. was it about a year ago, um, I love that show I wish it was still running. People I do that. too. It was I really, a good show. really wish it was still running. Um, even though I died at the end of season two, I people have come back from the dead in that show. So I was like, maybe I can. Uh, maybe there's a way. If it's a chance. It was a really cool part, and I, it was a really cool show. And did you find that the experience of all of this, like, does this give you now a better palette oh of gosh. emotions to draw from? Oh, absolutely. Like, did, did, I mean, that sure as hell must have helped with the anger block. Oh, absolutely. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can I can pull out anger and no problem now. <laughs> Are you a better actor because of this experience? Am a, I putting words in your no, mouth? No, I think I think I am a better actor also because I've been through real adversity and I have have, a, have had a lot of challenges. I mean, how many 40-year-old mother actors have spent time with the FBI? I mean, my life is <laughs> my life is really crazy. I've always wanted to write a book. What was I going to write a book about? You know? Oh, wow. Nothing. Now I have a story to write a book. It's not why I wrote the book, but that, that it's made my life more interesting. I think I'm a better person overall. And even though For I, sure. you know, I wish I'd just taken a five day or maybe a 16 day, taken those tools and 
fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> right. You know, and of course, I wish I'd never been branded. At the same time, I love my life. I mean, look at look, look at what I get to do. This you, is crazy. It is. It is. It is crazy, and I love your perspective on it, and I love the uh, the lens that you've been communicating to everyone and talking about it through because mm -hmm. you make it really accessible for people to ask questions mm -hmm. and try to understand it. And I think a lot of people, when they get to know you, Sarah, they see themselves in you mm -hmm. and how they would probably respond to that. Mm -hmm. um, you, 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 you don't mind being open about after the pregnancy, you were, you were postpartum. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's tough. Lots of moms are, are going through that. That's a really tricky thing. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of an impact has that had on uh, the creative work you're trying to do right now? No, the book tour aside, yeah. <laughs> what's that like? I mean, how are you, how are you coping with that? I'm, uh, I mean, it's day to day. I honestly, I think it's crazy to try to write a book with a newborn, but that was just sort of how things lined up and I went with it. And at the same time, it's it is easier because they're portable and you don't do have to do much with them except feed them and cuddle you're, them. You're <laughs> understating it. You, yeah. you have to do a lot. You do with have them, to do a lot, it. but you don't you're, have to take them to correct. play gyms or stuff like that. Sure, so I was sure. home a lot. I was, and I also, of course, I had a co-writer. So I didn't, I didn't write the book by myself. I wrote a book with an incredible co-writer and help yeah. pull it out of you and organize it. Yes. And that's great. And and lay it out. And it was a really like a back and forth process of of her writing stuff, me making it more accurate, sending it back, her making it more literary. Me writing stuff, her fixing it, like back, just back and forth. I mean, I think it should, and I know people have probably, it should be a, it should be a movie. Um, I'm sure something will it, happen like that. In the, and I, and I mean it in the non-sensational way, but mm -hmm. that it is just um, how it all happens. You go, this is, this is one of the most, it's like a shark that just leaps out and you do not see it coming. No. And you are one of the smartest, brightest, most creative people I know. Oh, and this you. could have happened to, to anyone because we don't have cult awareness seminars in school. No. You know, this, to your point, it's, I think it's popular now as we are really starting to try to wrap our head around Scientology mm. and what are some of the, the scandals or controversies with that and other, other fanatical cult type groups. But prior to that, the things that we are often leery of is, is at best is, you know, don't be conned, don't mm. be fooled. Mm -hmm. um, you know, watch out for someone who wants to, you know, run away with your money. Mm -hmm. um, they don't teach you anywhere that I can think of. Don't let someone run away with your life. Mm -hmm. Don't let someone run away with your sense of self or uh, identity of who you are and what you stand for. I mean, this right. was over that time. Mm -hmm. And you are not the only person in this. Mm -mm. There are hundreds of people in this organization. Thousands. Um, do you keep in touch with any of them? How, is, it, is it just like this, do you guys talk? Do you have a Facebook group? Like, <laughs> yes. what is that like? What's that like now? We, we actually have a Facebook group um, that, I'm, that I put together when we were in the group, and then I kicked off everybody that was remained loyal to the, to the leadership. When so there's it, still some that do it. There are still some that are loyal wow. to Keith. Actually, here in Vancouver, there's about five that, that I know of that, are, that think I'm crazy and that Keith is... Maybe not conventional, but not guilty of, of the crimes. But um, I, our, we have a Facebook group. I communicate with them. Um, I'd say the people that I'm closest to are the people that I was friends with prior. And then that we, you know, went through this ordeal together. And, and they were the ones who were also really supported me getting out. So we're still tight. People that I met in the program, it's there's only a handful that I'm still really close with. Because I'll tell you, a, a ranking system really messes up a friendship. You yeah, know, right. When people see each other like in in levels of of worth in that way, and I think a lot of people unfortunately kept their distance from me when I went public because who wants to be associated with a sex cult, right? So I sure. I understand that, and I I love that you <laughs> are so honest about that. Well, um, you know, I'm full I'm full transparency here. Like part of part of me kind of fixing the fact that I was such a big recruiter and it brought so many people in, and I was I vouched for this douchebag back in Albany for so long is I have to come out on the other side and, and lay it all out there. You know, that's part of, for me, my healing. Yeah. You know, I have to do that. What, um, so what does the next year look like for you? You're, you're, mm -hmm. of course, you, you're, you've got your, your, your newborn, mm -hmm. you're doing mom stuff. You're trying to manage that. Are you going to go aggressively on the book tour? I kind of, the book tour is aggressively over and I'm <laughs> in terms Good. of the aggressive stuff. Yeah. yeah being in Toronto and being New York and, and book signing and, Doing the launch, that's done. Like the big, the big shows, like Doctor Oz and stuff, which was amazing. Is that's that's all done. But stuff like this, like 
intimate podcast interviews where I don't have to travel. I really don't want to travel anymore, especially with two kids, too much. You've got your air miles logged. Yes. I I'm, I'm just want to stay put and kind of be normal and do, do normal family stuff. I did, uh, two weeks ago, have my brand removed from my body. Good for you. Yes. So that was a, a very exciting and also scary semi-traumatic surgery because it's sure. a sensitive area and... Um, I've also, I, do you I, feel better? Do you feel yes, different? Yes. I feel very different. I feel like just energetically to have those initials, even though it was very faint yeah. and it healed very well. Cause I was obsessive of putting different oils on like every day to try to get rid of it. Right. I could still see it and I could see it in the mirror. I could see the KR in the mirror every time I saw it, I looked in the mirror. And, and that's got to have a, a, an enormous impact yes. on, on how you're seeing yourself. Yes. And so yep. you did. That's congratulations. Thank you. I'm really actually the day, a couple of days after I got it off, I had, I had told my agent I wasn't ready to to act again. I've never stopped doing voiceover, so voiceover has been consistent for me. And the you've whole done time. some really cool voices. Yes, and I did voices. That's a big part of my life, and I'm so grateful to that. Um, my Little Pony. My Little Pony, Transformers. Yeah. Um, lots of different shows that my my five year old is likes to brag about at school. My mom is a voice of Rainbow Dash's mom. <laughs> you know, that's it's amazing. So cute. Oh, my little yeah. guy loves that one, and really? all my nieces love it. Um, that's play, really, play I, Windy Whistles. It's a big deal in the five in that genre, and the Bronies, of course. Love you me. did Max Steel. I did Max Steel. Yeah. yeah, played his girlfriend. We Sydney. The, the voiceover acting is is a really uh, there's a part of it. We had someone in mm-hmm. uh, recently talking about that. Do you find that easier or more difficult? Generally, for me, easier because I don't have to memorize lines. That's the hardest part about acting with the kids is mom brain. Like, mom brain is legitimately yeah. real. I, I, just to finish that, I did call my agent and said, okay, I'm ready. And that was, I think, having that surgery done. Is like yeah. I was ready to do something different. And I went back, had my, a great audition, uh, had a call back my first time out. I was like, yay, I'm back at it. And then in the call back, I could, just couldn't get the lines out. <laughs> and I'm really good at memorizing lines. Like, that's a, a skill that I've built for sure. And they just weren't there. And that's, yeah, it's what happens when you're, I think, part of breastfeeding and, like, literally your life force being sucked out of you that you can't. I'll have to believe yeah. you on that. Yeah, you, I, know, you, I know you, this, I'm in a room full of men. They don't get it. I, this is it's just, it's really I'm convinced tough. you're correct. I yeah, would not no, it's, dispute it's, that. It is legitimately scientifically proven to be a thing, mom brain. You end the book and you say to all the people who believed me and trusted me both going in and going out, to the people who haven't woken up yet who will read this one day, I hope we'll be friends again. To all the people who felt that I cut you out in a way that wasn't compassionate, forgive me. You apologize. I have always had good intentions, and I hope you will know my true heart. It's a, it's a really beautiful ending to the book. What is the ending to this story for Sarah? Um, you know, what do you want to do? I guess it's also what's next, the new beginning, or what's the ultimate? What's next after this? Do you feel that it's done yet is that did the book help you close it or is this always going to be a part of your your crusade to help you know protect and warn people and be a a beacon or a an inspiration or are you hoping one day to move to the whatever might be after this you know I don't know yet I I really see that I'm at a crossroads there and Mm -hmm. I also just have decided that I don't need to decide yet and I'm still in I'm in a healing I'm in a healing process especially with like physically healing and just ready to um, just, yeah, fo- heal myself. You're not, you're yeah, not sure I mean, yet. You're I'm taking not, your time. I'm not sure yet. And if, right now healing, at least till the end of this year, as the, that's what I've given myself till 2020. And I, I could see myself having this be a big part of my life, possibly becoming a psychotherapist, actually being able to help people through legitimate therapeutic processes. All about. Um, a number of people have con- uh, contacted me about groups that they're in and maybe working to expose those groups where there's massive and egregious abuses of power happening, mm-hmm. just as bad as my group. Um, I, I think I'll always want to talk about it, I think. But it's also, you know, like my son just started a new school. And, you know, I don't want to be the crazy cult woman. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not. No, you're not. I, I, you're I not. know. I, I you know. got to remember that. You've got to, you know, don't let anybody, especially you. Yeah. That's not the person that I, I see. And I don't think a single one of our audience will, yeah. will, will see that. I think you've been, I think you've gone to war, if you will. I feel like I've gone to war. Uh, yeah. And the same way we don't necessarily see a soldier like a killer. We mm-hmm. see that they have gone through something extraordinary. Yeah. And I think most people would see the, the best in you as a result of how you've clearly come out of it and what you've done. Um, I hope yeah. you will come back and as you go through this journey and 
in particular, anything you're doing creativity uh, wise, we would love to know. I'd love to talk about it. I think you're an incredible actress. Thank you. We love the stuff you're doing. This is a, a just a, a masterpiece of a story. And I really want everyone to, to take the time to read this, especially over the holidays if you've got some time, because you, you, you can't get it all from the headlines. No. You've no. got it. And, and you lived it. And I think it's uh, just Thank incredible. You. Will you come back another time and, and yes, talk to us? Yes, absolutely. And I will say um, about the book, if people don't have time to read, which I personally don't, being a mom, it's on Audible. And I, oh, great. I narrated it, which oh, is you really did. cool, because that was on my to-do list, was to, to get into narration. And it's so, your voice. My voice. Oh, that's and, so and great. I, I've heard, not to pump my own tires, but I heard it's a good narration. So. Well, I've heard you've got a bit of background in voice. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah playing, they're, they're that like, must be the hardest part is playing your voice. Well, they said, do you want to, are you sure you don't want to audition for it? I'm like, no, of course <laughs> I want to do my own narration. I want to be my voice. Good for you, yeah. Sarah. So yeah, please, please listen and, and have me back. I'd love to talk about other things and uh, whatever you want. I'll come and teach a workshop to your voiceover actors. That would be amazing. I hope business. you'll do that. Um, the book is called Scarred, The True Story of How I Escaped Nexium: The Cult That Bound My Life. It's by Sarah Edmondson. I love that you came in to talk about it today. Come another time. Thank you so much for being here today, Thank you Sarah. for having me.